morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 404 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Friday, June 14th, 2024, and it is a beautiful day here at the Beaver Lodge after uh, some pretty intense thunder showers, which we needed uh, because we needed some water. Uh, but yeah, oh boy, but uh, even with the tornado scares and stuff. So um, yeah, and uh, yes, kids, exactly. I wanted 1000 by Canada Day. And when I tuned into the YouTube, it said 1909 something. So 95. I don't know, 95. So hey, maybe while we're on air, you never know. <laughs> I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. We have, uh, unfortunately, a short one for you today because uh, it's a big day in Mr. Grizzly's life. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misty Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. And Mr. Grizzly, given it's a big day, how's your mental health doing? Um, hmm. I'm it, it kind of undecided because there's a, a mix of, of uh, a multitude mix of emotions right now that I'm, I'm feeling. Uh, yesterday I was good. Today I'm like, I'm not so sure. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see how I'm feeling later. I yeah, am. that's normal. Yeah, it is. It is. It's not yeah. out of the ordinary. So it's, it's going to be all over the map today. I'm, I'm uh, having lunch with a couple of colleagues and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a tough one for me. It is. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling... Uh, a multitude of emotions. So yeah, let's let's not dwell on it. I gotta. That's okay. Want to be happy, and that's why I said it there because um, also last night I believe uh, you attended a Red Blacks game. Yes, home opener, and they were victorious in beating the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who has been the whoa. Toast, they've been the toast of the league for the last few years. Yeah, Ottawa seem to have had a. I won't say they've had Winnipeg's number, but they've always held in tight with them. Ottawa's problem for the last few years has been their offense, right? They right. solid defense that has kept them in every single game and given them a chance, but their their offense just couldn't score. Well, last night they did. They won. They pulled it off. Now I I couldn't I didn't see the last two minutes and fifteen seconds because there was a a, a weather delay. There was thunder, lightning, uh, wicked winds, so they delayed the game. Is when there's lightning they delay the game. Wind, rain, no, it's football. But lightning, that's that's a risk. You're in an yeah. open field. Let's yep. not get anybody hurt. So they, they had a rain delay, weather delay, I guess you could say. And after about 30, 40 minutes, my buddy and I are like, okay. I'm like, dude, I, I got to get home. I got to go to bed. I got to work in the morning. He's like, yeah, I, know, I hear you. Uh, but his, his uh, so he, he has a, his fiance has a condo that overlooks the field on, mm. you know, on the tower. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So we went there and had a beer before the game. And I'm like, oh man, this is sweet. There's, she's like, no, just at the right level. Like, any higher up and you're getting into the nosebleeds, if you will, right. 
any lower and you don't see the field as well. She's like literally at the perfect height to watch the entire game from her. Oh. Yeah. That's, yeah. I was wondering about that building when I saw it go up. It's like, oh God, how cool is that? Yeah. You get to watch the game whenever you want. Oh, well, right. Well, and, and so this is the first time I've been in the building now. Sunday, yeah. we're having a memorial for my friend who passed away recently of cancer. Oh. And, uh, it, but it's at one o'clock on Sunday which is Father's Day, so I, I can't attend because yeah. I'm going to be with my, my my family, you know, see my dad for Father's Day. So it's kind of like, oh, you know, I wanted to go, but it, yeah. I, I still have a dad, and I'm very yeah. fortunate to still have a dad, so I'm going to spend some time with him, you know. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And uh, please, happy uh, Father's Day to your dad and uh, to uh, all the dads out there, uh, for all the kids and cubs. Mm -hmm. You all turned out pretty well, so... <laughs> all right uh all right so we got a lot to pack in a little bit here uh and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, dueling press conferences because now um elizabeth may and uh, mr jagmeet singh have um done their press conferences uh this is going to be a little messy uh yeah. only because um i've Barely, I've still got like about maybe six minutes to go in Elizabeth May's that I was watching just before the show started. Um, uh, Mr. Singh's, uh, I watched and uh, sort of did a live um, live stream. No, I wouldn't mm. call that when you're a, a live watch thing. Live tweeting? Live, live tweeting. Like there we go. That's what we call it. The word was escaping me. Um, to say that... Uh, Oh boy. Hmm. How do I phrase this? Okay, kids and cubs. Do you know when I speak often of tone versus countertone? Mm -hmm. Right? Somebody's is coming in with one tone and you want to counter the message. It's not just on facts. It's not just, I guess you have to pick the right tone to go against the tone that's being proposed as well. So it's not only the facts you present, it's not only the target, the audience that you're trying to communicate these facts to and i know as a government you're supposed to communicate to everyone but sometimes you know if it's a disability to benefit yes you want to tell all canadians what you're doing but you want to talk to the disabled community specifically right mm -hmm. so there's always two audiences when a government is making some type of announcement or politicians make an announcement the overall what you have to have, have to be seen as in the general public as doing and who it is that is targeted by this audience and sometimes it is the general public in terms of foreign interference it would be because we're all affected right but sometimes you know you're going for an angle right you're still the leader of the party yes this type of thing is the type of thing that calls for statesmanship yes yes it because does. we are all together and it's all our votes and it's all our democracy that's being affected by what other people would be doing mm -hmm. and if we do have winning participants so there's a tone that you expect going into this and now that we have these two press conferences with dueling narratives and dueling tones mm -hmm. uh, the fact that mr blanchet is getting his security clearance is going to be very interesting because right now i'm very 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 anxious <laughs> it's like anticipation see what mr blush is going to say now i'm sure that he might also he does have uh how would i put it uh an interest in being partisan in that in the province of quebec the number one rival is the liberal party right so right there could be but in terms of anything else i don't think so uh because mr blanchet when he had his press conference specifically um he said specifically it is my duty yes so we have to remember, always remember, that the overall bath, right, that all of this is bathing in. Oh, okay. Mm. The flavor of the bath water right now mm. is that the leader of the Bloc Québécois is taking his patriotic duty yeah. to Canada Yes. as a citizen to Canada, even though he would rather not be one. Which is unbelievably ironic, yet still, I'm going to give him one of those. Way more seriously than the leader of His Majesty's loyal, loyal position. 
yeah. opposition. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and the people coming out to find wall if he reads it, his hands are tied. Really? Because Mr. Singh and Ms. May, or Mrs. May, Ms. May, Ms. May? Ms. May. I, I say Miss May because but she, she's married now. She's married, but, yeah. But, but she still goes by Elizabeth May. Elizabeth May. Yeah. So they both were able to talk quite openly about it without breaking any laws or rules. How are their hands tied again exactly? Because that's well, all Skippy says. My yes. hands will be tied. Now, they are limited in what they can say, but Miss, of there, there is a team. Miss May will explains it, that there was a whole team at Privy Council that she talked to afterwards and said, okay, this is what you can say. This is what I would like to say this. Yes. Okay, if you want to say this, this is how much you can say. This is how far you can go. Or this is how you would formulate it to well, right, this make sure that you out of the ordinary for any sort of security level yes. intelligence. But this is new for yes. party leaders. Yes, it is. It is. Because up until... Governor General David Johnson, one of the things that he did end up accomplishing is making sure that when it comes to this type of stuff, all party leaders have access to it so that these types of decisions can be made, hopefully in a room mm -hmm. where they're quietly discussing, like grownups, right? It's like, okay, in this room, we park the partisanship at the door, as David McKinney said, because yes. this is an issue of national interest that affects all of us equally. Exactly. Like, I, I right. was not a fan of his brother, Dalton, but... Uh, uh, David McGinty is... He's a good MP. Yes. He's a good member of parliament. Very, very and I know member. this because I know people who live in his riding who have said nothing but glowing things about him. And I'm like, really? They said, yep. He's, yeah. He does his job and he does it well. He has gravitas. He does. Yes. Um, so... That's, like I said, that's the overall context. And we have uh, what is being referred to in some of these press conferences as a, uh, especially by Elizabeth May, a commitment to not knowing. Yes. Well, it, I don't know if you've seen and, his comment here. And from... now, hold on, I just want to finish this point. And I was saying a few days ago, mm -hmm. right? And as you know, as I learn, I change, and I admit my mistakes, and oh, I yes, check of the But what I was saying here is that the subject of the day is father muck and treason. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a definition, an actual legal definition of what is treason in Canada, and treason in Canada has to involve some type of violence or force. Yes. So we don't have treason. The problem is, is that right now, we do not have a willingness to accept foreign interference, influence type of thing, laws. Mm -hmm. There are no charges under that. So it doesn't fall under treason. No, it doesn't. And even though it's unethical, and even though some of it may be criminal, it's not textbook like treason. This, it's not treason, but it also um, you could say it's treasonous. It's, 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 it's not treason legally, right? No, it's treasonous. But Elizabeth May, who is also a lawyer, mm -hmm. like this, said, "Yes, it is. If you're putting the interests of another country above your own, it is treachery." Yes. Yes. All right. Period. So, but we don't have anything legally. No. So that Bill C-70 that's going through the House, which all parties seem to be cooperating on, including the Conservatives, mm -hmm. again, surprise here, uh, because normally, the cons normally, and this is when I say new behavior, normally when somebody is doing something to protect the nation, like, for example, increasing access to voting, mm -hmm. which is good, right? The line from the conservatives is always that the other party is trying to game the system somehow. Well, right. I, this is not happening. I thought or, it was, or, or they go not like that, and I that's not was, happening. I thought it was interesting how yesterday Pierre Polyev said that um, if he finds out any of his members of parliament, any of his MPs and caucus are, are are part of this, he will kick them out of the party. I'm like, yeah, but didn't Michael Chong just say you can't do that? Yeah. Then again, this is performative because, and he can't, it's meaningless two ways. Yeah. What, he can't read, one, he won't read the, the report. He can't one, read the report. He can't he read the report. To get his clearance. Exactly. So he doesn't know who to, yeah. who to do it to. And he can't do it because, anyway. And the other two, like I said, they waived even their parliamentary privilege, the two that know. Mm -hmm. So they can't share it. They cannot share it. Or if they do it, they're breaking the law. <laughs> yeah. Like and they will. Big time. They will be in trouble for it. <laughs> yes. Ser not good trouble. Bad trouble. Knock on the door trouble. Yes. Right. Not like we're going to wait and see how this, how this pans out. This is, that's like 
Um, you did something, come with us. <laughs> so, and then the other way is because of the Reform Act and the Conservative Party, mm -hmm. the leader can't unilaterally, like the other party, say, you did this, you're out. It has to be put to a caucus vote. Right. And uh, if the party decides, uh, no, we don't want to, we want to keep this one mm -hmm. in, our, in our fold. Thank you Nothing very much. Yeah. Almost Unless like the person arrested. Like almost like alleged PP on a pro choice vote. You know, it's like I'm pro choice, yeah, but uh, 75% of your caucus isn't. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like this. And anybody who tries to run in that party or to become a member of that party and run for uh, uh, in a constituency in a riding and, and wants to become a member of parliament for the Conservative Party of Canada who is pro choice, they don't let you run. They eliminate yeah. you. They yeah. eliminate yeah. you. They've done it three times already to three female candidates. They'll continue to do it. Right. So they're disenfranchising people. Yes. So in this party, because, because it's all of caucus, even if the leader says this one really, really has to go, if the party is even more open for business for cheating than the actual leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the leader has no power. So Pierre Polyev, when he's saying that, listen, if you don't know these two things about the party, it sounds real good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, like you said that. Yeah, but uh, the, that's what he will do. Then you have to ask, how does that get done? And is that actual possible? You have to go down three layers when people tell you they're going to do something. You're going to do that? Okay, that sounds good. How does that get done? Okay. Is that even possible or feasible? If it can't get done because there's no process or the process becomes way too complicated that it can't, you know, it's going to be too onerous, they don't want it done. If they said they're going to do it, but you look at it and it's something that's just not feasible, it's not going to get done. Right? Mm -hmm. So, the, um, sorry, I'm, I have the two different uh, press conferences here. One from yes. that you sent me, Jugmeet, and one from Elizabeth May. The Elizabeth May one is like an hour. Yes. <laughs> Jugmeet is about 21 minutes. Now, yes. the Elizabeth May is from the 11th of June. Yes. Jugmeet is from yesterday. Yes. Uh, we'll look at, we'll compare and contrast, of course, but uh, this comment here uh, from Linda, I'm going to put it on the screen right now. It, yes. <laughs> and for those of you listening, it says, Jugmeet reminded me of Andrea Horvath attacking Stephen Del Duca instead of Ford in the Ontario election. He was putting party above what's best for Canada. You know, I completely agree. And I remember watching one of the debates and I was like, Horvath, what are you doing? Why are you attacking the liberal leader who's not in power? You, you should be working with him to get Ford out. And what she did was split the vote amongst left wings and centrists, giving Dug a, a majority, and of course, you know, because the newspapers had said uh, you know, it's a done deal, but people didn't show up to vote. Mm -hmm. so, you know. All right. Uh, so, uh, do you want me to start right at the beginning for Mr. Singh? Uh, he, hold on, Mr. Uh, should we start with Mr. Singh? Or do you want to start with Elizabeth? Let's start me? with Elizabeth May, actually. Okay. Uh, and he, he gets some cups. Uh, unfortunately, we won't, we won't be able to go deep no. in here, so we're just going to uh, show you the start. Uh, for now, and then hopefully next week we'll be able to go a little deeper into them. Uh, but uh, yeah, start with Miss May. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look at this then. This will run for a little while. Bonjour, merci. Je suis ici avec mon collègue et député de Kitchener Centre, Mike Morris. Um, I want to share with Canadians what I learned from reading the top secret version of this, the special report on foreign interference in Canada's democratic processes and institutions. This is the redacted available to the public version, which I'm keeping near me for reference now and then. But this is the work of the National Security and Intelligence Committee of parliamentarians and they have done incredible work. I learned a lot from reading this. I'm going to read a prepared statement, which is not my normal way of going, 
But I, as someone who has obtained top secret security clearance, which is what allowed me to read the complete unredacted report, I want to choose my words carefully, so I prepared some. And then I, I will be prepared to take questions in English and French. Forgive me, I'll say right now, I usually answer quickly and off the top of my head. You'll find today that I'm going to stop and think. Depending on your questions, I'll have to consider, am I trespassing or coming near the line where I might in inadvertently hit a tripwire to a national security issue? So I'll stop and be careful. There are in this report names of MPs. And the MPs whose names should be known, members of the committee across party lines have done stellar work on a very difficult set of issues. They should be better known and they should be thanked. This is a very innovative thing, the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. It's chaired by David McGinty, includes Stéphane Bergeron, Liberal, Don Davies, NDP, Patricia Latinizo, Rob Morrison, Conservative, Alex Ruff, Conservative, and several senators, Patricia Duncan, Francis Lankin, and Marty Klein. I am in awe of their work, frankly, having read the complete unredacted report. This is not easy stuff, and the work that they did, I, th I do think all Canadians should be aware of their work and thanking them, because they really have to work in the shadows and they have to honor their top secret security clearance. Being a member of this committee has hardly gotten them the limelight. I'm sorry, I just, I love that she keeps saying top secret security clearance, because she's really sticking the knife into Pierre Polyev with mm -hmm. that. Now, notice, of course, now, right? Like, she's like setting the table, but mm -hmm. how seriously she is treating this. She's not taking it lightly at all. Right. Okay, let's get back to it. Or a lot of thanks. This report focuses on a critical issue about which Canadians should know more. The extent to which foreign governments seek to influence Canadian political life hoping to impact domestic policies while advancing their own country's reputation. Et en français, ce report se concentre sur une question essentielle sur laquelle les Canadiens devraient en savoir plus. La mesure dans laquelle les gouvernements étrangers cherchent à influencer la vie politique canadienne. Foreign governments also attempt to interfere. I'm just going to underscore. The first sentence is about influencing, second, interfering. Foreign governments also attempt to interfere with our democratic processes across national and sub-national electoral politics. Influence and interference are related but different. We need to know more about the tactics and strategies used by foreign actors in both categories, especially when actual interference is involved. The threat of foreign governments working against Canada's interests, attempting to impact Canada, must be a specific and more deeply understood threat, especially for people seeking elected office. Malheureusement, ce travail important a été éclipsé par une tempête médiatique tout à fait compréhensible qui, à mon avis, est exagérée. Unfortunately, that important work has been eclipsed by a totally understandable media firestorm, which, in my view, is overblown. I have been asked many times in slightly different ways how it feels to sit in a parliament knowing that there are potential traitors among us. Shouldn't the public have a right to know which MPs have sold out their country for benefit 
or favor from a foreign government. Having read the full, unredacted National Security Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians report, for myself I can say, I have no worries about anyone in the House of Commons. There is no list of MPs who have shown disloyalty to Canada. There is no list of MPs who have shown disloyalty to Canada. So I am very glad I read the full report. I am very comfortable sitting with my colleagues. We will disagree on policy and on many issues. But I am vastly relieved. The most worrying case found at page 26 of the publicly available report is one referenced instance of a member of parliament proactively, and that's the, in quotes, in the public document, proactively sharing privileged infora information with a foreign operative. That person should be fully investigated and prosecuted. That person is a former MP. The few named people may be compromised. They have been beneficiaries of foreign governments interfering in nomination contests. Say I, saying as I do that I'm relieved does not mean that there is nothing to see here, folks, so let's forget the whole thing. There are clearly like threats that. to Canadian democracy from foreign governments. I would like to suggest to all colleagues in Parliament, particularly leaders of the other parties, that we refocus our public statements and parliamentary debates on what steps need to be taken to better protect our democracy. It is clear some foreign governments see Canada as a pretty vulnerable, soft target. All recommendations of the hard-working National Security Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians should be implemented. They have worked harder and have more deep background than any other MP. For myself, I suggest we fortify the binding nature of our oath when we are sworn in as members of Parliament. The Ethics Commissioner should be mandated to work with our intelligence community and specifically be prepared to issue reports where on investigation it is clear the MP has failed to put their loyalty to Canada above any other interest, particularly above personal benefit. This must be extended to the influence of foreign transnational corporations. Interesting. Those are my conclusions. I'm happy to answer any questions that this statement has given rise to from the journalists here present. All right, let's stop there. That, uh, let's, let's compare and contrast that to what we're about to watch here in a moment. And now, and, and that's probably all we're going to have time for today, so okay. just the impression, kits and cubs. But now, contrast in tone and in narrative. It's night and day. It, it's really night and day. And, and, and once again, you know i got to say this. Once again, I'm disappointed in his response. I'm disappointed yeah. in his tone. I'm disappointed in him, period. Yeah. Once again, it's like, why does he keep doing this to us? I am more alarmed today than I was yesterday after having read the report. What is clear to me is that Justin Trudeau knew and didn't act, and Pierre Polyev doesn't even want to know about serious allegations touching his party. To me, that disqualifies him as a leader, and I do not buy his phony excuses. I'll give it to him on that. Both yep. Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev 
are putting the interests of their party ahead of the country, and that is wrong. Je suis plus inquiété aujourd'hui qu'hier après avoir lu les documents. C'est clair que Justin Trudeau avoir a su l'information, mais il n'a pas agi, et que Pierre Poliev ne veut pas savoir les détails des allégations qui touchent directement à son parti. Je n'accepte pas ces excuses. C'est clair que les deux, Justin Trudeau et Pierre Poliev, veulent protéger leur parti au lieu de défendre le pays. Foreign interference is harmful to Canadians. It is especially harmful to people connected to countries like India and China, who are the most frequent practitioners of foreign interference. People should be free to speak their minds, disagree with foreign governments, advocate for policies, run for office, exercise their vote, and be free from intimidation and harassment. Yeah, At its extreme, I, I foreign interference can result in violence. I didn't mean to do that. I just I was trying to pause it and I hit the wrong button. I got I got to pause it there for for a second or two. The stark contrast between mm -hmm. Ms. May's address and his mm -hmm. they're night and day. Mm -hmm. Night and day. Now, look, I'll give him I'll give him uh the respect he deserves for the way he called out Pierre Polyev. Mm -hmm. Ms. May did it a lot subtler. Mm -hmm. But she did it too. Mm -hmm. But when she did not point the finger of blame at the prime minister, and he immediately did that. His is he pulling from the bottom deck of the conservative party on his comms here? Like it, no. it, the traditional NDP comms is liberal Tory, same old story. Yeah. yeah. He's trying to equate one with the other. But basically his criticism of the prime minister is that he didn't act fast enough or do enough mm -hmm. versus Pierre Poliev, where the allegations are, that there have been interference directly in the leadership races, and we have a leader of a party that doesn't appear to want to know what's going on so that he can fix the problem. Yes. So he's basically going, so, and he's basically putting those two things on the same level mm -hmm. rather than choosing not to swing at one pitch mm -hmm. in order to focus on the one that's actually the problem. He's trying to because maybe the, the prime minister, maybe it is true the prime minister didn't act fast enough, but there is action. Well, I like this quote as opposed here. to someone who doesn't want to know. This quote from Saucy Sea Witch: Singh is making sure to keep his party in third place yet again. He's in fourth right now. Actually. Right now, yeah. But here's yeah. the thing: like Elizabeth May comes to the podium, the sigh mm -hmm. that was noted gives all this context about the importance of the, this, this document and all the security concerns and the good work of the committee and all that kind of stuff. He just bellies right up out the mic. I am more concerned now. You know right you know right then and there. He had his mind made up before that he, he ever read the thing. Number one and two, that in the choice of partisanship or statesmanship, he's choosing partisanship. Yeah. Now, remind you here that the, the mini bath the bath within the bath mm -hmm. that this is taking place with is that Miss May has absolutely no respect for the manner in which Mr. Singh does politics. Clearly. In previous elections, Mr. Singh tried to portray Miss May in Quebec, well, throughout the rest of Canada, as being pro-Quebec separatism. I guess, and they had it out. It's like, why are you doing this? Was yes. this go like this? You know this? Is and, Ms. and Singh would just keep on saying it. Like who, like who it was it was the election where the Greens could have had that breakthrough, right? Maybe I like guess, and the NDP may have gotten stomped, at, and they were fighting over the the, the Green issue, I guess, and then he decided to play dirty pool to take her out. And and he's losing loyal party members. He is. Yeah, I know people who have been lifelong dippers, as they call themselves, who are like, I I can't vote NDP in the next election. That, like literally, I've heard that from people. I'm like, really? They go, I can't. I can't because I don't like the way he's taking the party. He's he's the NDP leader, but he's coming off like a conservative and not a progressive, by the way. You know, is constantly saying things like, we forced the government, we forced the government, we forced the government. I'm like, no, you didn't. You worked with the government to make things happen to bring in legislature, to table bills. You worked with them. You didn't force them. You can't force them. You don't have enough votes. 
it's like, oh, just please stop doing this. All right. Fire your comms people. <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. Yep. As we've seen with the alleged involvement of India in the murder of a Canadian on Canadian soil. Today, I'm going to speak to you about my impressions and opinions based on the unredacted report from ENSICOP on foreign interference. I'm not going to discuss the details from that report, like the names. I'm not going to do that because to do so could jeopardize the ability of our national security systems to do the work that we need them to do to keep us safe, to safeguard our democracy. It is important to say that while I have seen the unredacted report, I did not have access to all the same intelligence that the members of the ENSICOP committee had when they came to their conclusions. Miss May said the same thing. But after mm -hmm. having read the report, I am more convinced than ever of the conclusions of the ENSICOP committee and the report that some parliamentarians are, in the words of the intelligence services, semi-witting or witting participants in the efforts of foreign states to interfere in our politics. Okay, let's put that a stop there. All yeah, of these behaviors. That because of did they read the same report? <laughs> okay, no, but, no, but here's the thing. That, that's fine. They did read the same report. But what he's saying, like this, I just want, want people no, to know. sarcasm. Like this, yes. But, yes, in that sense, yes. But he's li the only thing he is saying here is, I read the report, and I'm more convinced now that what was in the public report is accurate. That's an empty and meaningless statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, here we go, back to it. Of these MPs are deeply unethical and contrary to the oaths and affirmations parliamentarians take to conduct themselves in the best interests of Canada. In short, there are a number of MPs who have knowingly provided help to foreign governments, some to the detriment of Canada and Canadians. There are also politicians at all levels of government who have benefited from foreign interference. Some of this behavior absolutely appears to be criminal and should be prosecuted. The redacted report also discusses the conservative leadership contests, which were the targets of foreign interference by China and India. The Prime Minister has had access to intelligence that raises concerns about MPs knowingly benefiting from foreign interference. He may disagree with that intelligence, but I believe he has not taken the steps he should have to deal with this. He has sent the message that he is willing to accept some level of foreign interference. Okay, stop. The leader of the opposition has had information for 10 days. Sorry, sometimes it's okay. slow to respond. <laughs> What he said now, there are two reports. Ms. Manet makes it clear in her press conference. There was the report that came like before, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That if they say that the prime minister didn't do enough on, that's one thing. This one can't got to the prime minister sometime in March, mm -hmm. and then they did the other thing. This one has much more secret information that the prime minister could not have taken action on. So there's two things there. So Mr. Mr. Singh is conflating both of them. But number two, what he's saying right now is. I do not believe that the Prime Minister took enough actions or acted fast enough. So he's not actually pointing to anything in the report. No. He's saying the report says this, I believe he didn't do enough and therefore he was willing to accept a certain amount of influence. It's not the report that is saying that. No, but he's, he's saying that. He's crafting it very cleverly to make it, give the impression that the report is saying that. It is clever. It's very clever. Is, but I don't like it. Because no. it's partisan. it's not what the moment calls for. No, that's that's he's exactly. not reading the room. Yeah, no, you're you're right. He's not reading the room. And after watching Ms. May, he should have oh taken some notes. Yeah, and thought like, you know the way she did that that was pretty effective because he throws she, little you know, elements right. He says mm -hmm. about the security document what the, like this and then like and he talks about Pierre you know like this he mentioned like yeah he linked India being involved in the leadership race with the conservatives with the extrajudicial killing on Canadian soil of Harjit Singh Nijar. Mm -hmm. Harjit Singh Nijar. Like this. Especially like this. The, the country that is suspected of having done that tried to influence the leadership of your party. 
right? That they tried to influence the leadership of your party is one thing, but that it's a country that is doing that, that feels they can do that on Canadian soil. On top of that, really? Still, you're not yeah. motivated enough to go? Really? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, his messaging is, oh. So, I mean, but had he focused on that, mm -hmm. right? How much more powerful that would have been. Well, it, but by trying to hit both camps, she, lob she, a grenade into both camps, one case is so much weaker mm -hmm. than the other that it just pulls away and you're just focusing on that instead of the point. The way it I loses, see it, he stomps all over the message. The way I see it here is he is not doing anything in service of the country. He's doing something no. in service of his party and his personal want, need, yes. drive, desire to become prime minister. Yes. As he is criticizing other people for putting their party over the country. Yeah. In this moment, he's putting his party over the country by doing this in this way. Miss May did nothing of the sort. It's like zero self-awareness alert. Yeah. You know, the more I see Ms. May speak, the more I wish she could be the head of a party that actually had a chance to win. I've been saying this for decades. Well, and you, you remember... <laughs> A few years back, do you remember a few years back, and I'm just going to go on a tangent for a couple of seconds here. A few years back, uh, where they were having a debate, and the leaders debate, and they said, well, she can't sit at the table because they don't have any seats. And they're, they're like, well, that's technically true. I'm like, it is. But the difference between, like, why is the leader of the Petit Québécois sitting at that table? He represents one province. That's it. Her party is Canada-wide. So if she can't be there because she doesn't have any seats, but her party is running... Uh, in every riding across the country, all 338 of them, she should have a seat at that table just as much as that guy does. Hmm. Really what it was was they didn't want her there because they know she would slice them to ribbons. Right. Because <laughs> they can't debate with her because she's smarter. She's a more effective communicator. And she actually wants to tell people what the deal is. Yes. So, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like there are times, there are times in Canada, whether you agree with the party or not, that you look to Bla you look to the Bloc Québécois and you look to the Greens to find out what the real poop is. Because yeah. they got nothing to lose. <laughs> You're right. It, literally, they have nothing to lose. So that their interest in what what is what serves Canadians best in the case of the Green and in the case of Petit Québécois or the CAC or, or the whomever, Bloc, yeah. what yeah. serves Quebecers best needs. Yes. And and the irony is Nine times out of ten, they both actually see eye to eye, even though they might not say it. Yeah. They both have the interest of Canadians at heart, even though, you know, they put Quebec first because they yes. represent the province. Nine times out of ten, what's good for Quebec is also good for Canada, right? There and you what's go. What's good for Canada is also good for Quebec. There's only there very go. few things that we're, we're, where we really disagree. All right. Let's uh, keep rolling for a few more minutes. Level of foreign interference. The leader of the opposition has had information for 10 days that conservative leadership races were the target of foreign interfer interference by India, a country that is also alleged to have killed a Canadian on Canadian soil, as well as interference from China. His response has been silence. He's not answered a single question from the media. We do not know if anyone from the Conservative Party has followed up on these concerns. And, we ref and he refuses to get security clearance to get further information that could help him know what happened and what he can do about it. He doesn't want to know, and that is deeply troubling. No one should put their party's interests ahead of the country's interests. Canada comes first. I am not relieved after reading this report. I am more concerned today than I am than I was yesterday. This government has received multiple repeated warnings and recommendations and has not acted. Today, Canada is vulnerable to foreign interference and this weakens our democracy and the confidence of Canadians. I believe we must find a way to let MPs who are named in this report know that we know what they're up to. I believe this can be done in a way that doesn't compromise national security. If there continues to be no consequences for MPs who knowingly help foreign governments act against Canadian interests, we will continue to be an easy target. Removing MPs who knowingly participate in foreign interference would have the deterring effect on this type of behaviour. 
It would send a message that these countries cannot try to use MPs in this manner. I'm ready for any questions you might have. What was Elizabeth Serious allegations I I touching. The button there. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Now, I don't know if you've. Uh, let's just play this because just play the first question because. I can't remember where the first question is though. I hit, oh, six minutes. It's at six minutes. Okay, I hit yeah. it, I hit the button back by accident. I didn't mean to do that. Because this is like, go back two more seconds. So let's watch them finish. Watch how quick it happens. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Was, what, was Elizabeth May wrong? Because she said she was relieved. Now, I'm responding to the details uh, or my opinion based on the report that, that I read. The unredacted or the redacted version that Canadians have access to alone should have raised serious concerns and should have maintained those concerns. The, the, re, the redacted version of the report makes it very clear that the Prime Minister knew about this, and that there's serious allegations directly impugning the Conservative Party and Conservative Party leadership races, and Pierre Polyev doesn't want to know. Those should already be seriously concerning. Uh, what I read has only bolstered the conclusions that Ansicop report outlines, has only made those conclusions even more concrete. Why are you okay, stop right there. That's how it started, Kits. Mm -hmm. Point blank. Because I'm now going to take questions. It took less than a second, the first one, point blank range. Why do you differ so widely from Elizabeth May? The pause, the stammering, the skating, mm -hmm. never mentions his name, her name, never says why. He basically said, after reading the unredacted report, my comprehension of the redacted report like this, that what's what was in it, my confidence in what it said was, it actually is true is bolstered. Well, of course it would be. Yeah. Yeah. I that. that literally said nothing. Mm -hmm. So here he is. This guy comes out, says, I'm going to attack both of them. I'm going to say something completely different than what the person said, who is respected, parliamentary, parliamentary of the year, hardest working, best order, most respected by your peers. Then I'm going to take this entirely different tone. And like this, knowing that the obvious follow-up first question that's going to come up is, hey, why are you taking such a different tone? And I'm going to have no answer. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. It's really bad. He was asked this question five different times in five different ways over the next 15 minutes. And he never has really an answer for it. So he, he like I Reverted said, back to the same answer every time in English and in French. And then later on, he was asked like this, well, A, if the federal government with whom you have a supply and confidence agreement didn't take action fast enough and is willing to be somewhat complicit. Why haven't you broken your confidence agreement? Has no answer for that either. And then it says something, well, I don't think that an election is a solution to foreign interference. Nobody suggests. He said he to a room of nobody who suggested that. Just said, you, do, you don't have to be in this agreement anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take the government down, call election, but you don't have to be in this agreement. So if he's sitting there and saying like this, that the Prime Minister of Canada was willing to accept a certain level of interference, but is not willing to break his confidence in supply payment. Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah. He's, so yeah. he went in, said, I'm going to, this is an opportunity to smear both of them. So I'm going to do that. This, the rest of the press conference did not go well for him. Like this, there were even journalists exasperatedly screaming at him because mm -hmm. what he said did not make sense. Yes. Yeah. You really should watch the whole thing. And at the end of the whole thing, like this, when the jug meet sing, they realized that this wasn't going and said, this, thank you, that's my last question, fold this thing and then left. Mm -hmm. Like this, some guy in the back that we don't see said, oh, Ask them the tough questions. Come on. And you hear journalists going, and where's your leader? Now, we don't know who that was, but I assume it might have been a conservative. Yeah. <laughs> Given how much he attacked, he, he stuck the knife into Podyev and like this. So, um, the link to the, the entire uh, press conference is in the, in the chat for those who want to watch it. It's, it's only 21 minutes. Yeah. Elizabeth Mays is over an hour. Yeah, you could uh, put the next one. But the Elizabeth May one has like 
tons of really, 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 really good information. Well, uh, again, she's she's not playing politics. Nope. She's not. She every question that Elizabeth May is asked, mm-hmm. and that's what if we had more time, show the contrast. Direct question asked, direct answer given. Mm-hmm. He was point blank asked a direct question. He did not give a direct answer. He skated. She did. He did not say why it is his position defers. Now, the other thing that I can't wait for is that somebody's going to go to Miss May and ask her, you know, like, what do you think, Mr. I can't wait because oh, you know gonna she's going to give a direct answer to a it's direct question. Be so good. <laughs> I'm eagerly anticipating that question and her response. I really am. I really am. <laughs> I hope it, I don't know if it's already happened, but um, yeah. This here did not go well for him. The only parts where he did really well is when he was literally linking the extrajudicial killing mm-hmm. of Hardeep Singh Niger to the fact right. that India is supporting. That well, was the new thing that he did, the angle that nobody else has touched, the one that brought something to light mm-hmm. that was actually new information connecting a few dots, to letting you know how bad this actually is, that the leader of the Conservative Party does not want to know. But the rest of it, well, is, is Blanchette, uh, does Yves Francois Blanchette have, uh, have a uh, press conference today? Because he's reading it as well. Yes, but he has to get his clearance first. Oh, he hasn't gotten his clearance So yet. it seems okay. that the other two, when they got it the first time, it was good enough to get right. this as well. They didn't have to go get an extra level, but Blanchette didn't have it at all. So. Right. So that's, so he, so it's, it's going to be a while. I think, yeah. Okay. I think. Yeah. 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 That doesn't, and I don't care who you are, that clearance does take time. Yeah. And to get that level of clearance, they go back and ask. I don't know if you've ever filled out. I've filled it out for top secret. This is uh, a level above top. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if this is probably, I have. Yeah. this is probably cosmic. And for top secret, they're like, they'll ask things about what you did in the first grade. Yep. And I'm not joking. And when you go in for your interview, they ask you questions that are really uncomfortable questions. <laughs> so much so that one of my colleagues, when he got his top secret clearance for a uh, job we were doing for a, a high level security thing. Anyway, uh, he called me, says, yeah, I have my, I have my interview. And it was a phone interview. He says, I have my interview today. It's going to take four hours. I go, yeah, you're going to want the rest of the day off. He goes, no, I'll just do the interview. Then I'll meet you on the job site. He does the interview. Then he calls me. He goes, yeah. Um, I go, yeah, I know you need the day off. He goes, yeah, they, they ask some really uncomfortable probing questions. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know the questions they ask and you get side swiped with 90% of them. And they're doing it intentionally to trip you up, to see if you're a liar, to see how honest you are. It's all part of the program. It's, it's a psyop, if you yeah. will. It's necessary, though, because they have to determine who you are. Now, the irony is we need a top-secret security clearance to install audio-video equipment in a place where we have no access to any information. Right. Right. <laughs> but just to be in the building, you have to be top-secret. Well, maybe you don't install something else, right? Well, that's the other thing. Maybe we put a listening device or something, even though they'll do all the sweeps. You know, there's always back doors. There's always, yeah. and they sweep four to five. House of Commons gets swept, I think, 10 times a day. Jeez. 10 times a day. The RCMP goes in and does a full sweep. You don't even know they're doing it. And I know because I wired the House of Commons. Hmm. There you go. All right, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed. Uh, yes. Short, sweet, to the point. I got to get into the office for my final day, uh, which, as you know, is... is going to be emotional for me but uh thanks thanks to everybody for their their caring their concern their commentary i really do appreciate it this is going to be a gut punch to me today but we do have this to look forward to tomorrow our mental health walk it's mental health walk eve so please those of you who can share let people know tomorrow Uh, June 15th, 2024, the first of what we hope to be an annual, and we're planning to make an annual event, our first mental health walk through Canada's capital, through the downtown core, through Centertown. And I I think maybe we'll look at expanding the length eventually, but I'd like to keep it at 5K and I'd like to keep it in Centertown as sort of an homage and a salute to those of us who live in this part of the city and this part of the country who suffered for three plus weeks during the occupation because this is my home, this is my neighborhood. This is where I had to stand up to those who would rob us of our democracy because they, remember, their MOU was dissolve the government, we'll put our own people in, not democracy. So in honor of 
the folks who live in this neighborhood, which, by the way, is the poorest ward in the city of Ottawa. Many people don't realize that, but, oh, but look over here. I go, yeah, I get it. I know that's a $4 million condo. But there's a person sleeping on the street just outside of that $4 million condo. Hmm. It is the poorest ward in the city, made up of mostly working, working class and working poor. So in honor of this community, the people who live here, I said, let's do a walk around this area, talk about men's mental health, have the chat, do the necessary thing, raise awareness. And maybe we can raise a couple of bucks this year, but for next year, we're really going to put the push on, start promoting it in advance. We'll set up a charitable foundation and we'll do the thing that's necessary to try. And, and, and if we can, like our guest yesterday, if we can do one-tenth of what he's done, I would be so very happy. Hmm. And I don't know about you folks watching and listening, but uh, both Mr. Beaver and myself, yesterday we ended the show with his, his video, uh, and we were both uh, very emotional. I just, I ended the video, I went straight to the, the end credit uh, link, and we, we were out. And I, once the show ended, we jumped back into the green room and we we're both, you know, in tears because that lyrically and, and emotionally, that song was a gut punch and a necessary one. So please, if you can share, share with as many people as possible about the mental health walk, uh, about what our initiative is, about how we're trying to raise awareness that men simply do not have the supports that we need for our mental health. And remember what our guest said yesterday, Mr. Jeffrey, who who said so much of the problems we have in society, and I reflected that as well, is, is because men, A, don't understand that they have a mental health issue, be it depression or anxiety. They don't even know they have it, which reflects in anger. And as he said, uh, he says, counseling people and they're, and they're telling him how this, this, my, uh, my husband's an asshole. He's like, and how long have you been with him? 25 years. And how long has he been an asshole? Just in the last year. And you don't think there's a problem with that? Like that just comes right out of nowhere? No, it's a mental health issue. And so many of our problems in society, which are blamed on men, and yes, men are at the heart of those problems, but the heart of the problem for the man is a mental health issue that never gets dealt with. So... Tell as many people as you can. Please inform everyone. We are doing this for our brothers, our fathers, our sons, our nephews. And it's a we problem, not a he problem. Remember that. If there's a man in your life that has a mental health issue, it affects you too. So let's do what we can to let people know that we need more support. And I guess those are my words of wisdom too. All right. Get some cups. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you would like to make sure you don't miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. She sponsored our pod page. If you scan the QR code that's about to appear, it'll bring you there. Podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, yes, there if you click subscribe when we have something fresh off the bandwidth it will come directly to you uh thank you as well to everybody who is uh, helping us uh get to 2000 on our true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube page uh we're really really happy it did not happen during the episode however oh well but hey it's been, it might happen before bedtime so there you go. Uh, yeah, our goal go was there, to hit a thousand by Canada Day. We're on the on the eve of two thousand, and then so. two thousand by next Canada Day. <laughs> thank <laughs> so, you. Hello. Thank you. So uh, thank you so much. Yes, indeed. So um, there you go. Uh, if you uh, click there, go there. You can lick all our buttons. 
like, share, subscribe, and uh, that makes us very happy. If you want to support us in other ways, uh, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's Head brings you to our coffee page where you will find our tip jar if you would like to encourage us to do more. That's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. Uh, thank you for anything that you can do. But remember, the gift of your attention is the most important to us, and we like to hear from you. So True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com is our email address. And if you would like to get one of these snazzy mental health walk t-shirts, uh, please just send us your shirt size, your mailing coordinates, and $35. We take care of uh, shipping and handling out of that and all taxes and that kind of stuff. Um, so, and uh, we can get you one of these. It'll come after the walk, of course, but uh, if you have one, it still helps us because, you know, if you take pictures of yourself in it as we prepare for the next year, uh, all of that helps us uh, promote it. And, you know, uh, we, we decided, um, yes, uh, I, I kind of decided that even though the walk is the 15th, uh, just because, you know, our podcast audience is a little behind, we recorded a special message for them, uh, but that we're going to keep the things going, the, the portals going until, uh, the end of the month. We also have some guests, uh, coming in over the rest of the month to also discuss mental health. So, uh, we'll keep the opportunity to buy the t-shirts past the 15th and uh, make a donation, uh, if you would like to, uh, we would really appreciate that. Okay. Oh, thank um, you, Kitshawn. Wow, thank you. Um, I want to show you this. This is uh, Ozzy Pete just sent this to me, who is in Australia, right? Right. Uh, he has a T-shirt. Ah, uh, he made himself one. Yay! Way to go, Pete. Thanks, cool. brother. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you. And, oh, thank you, people uh, making donations through the Super Chat. Um, we really appreciate them. Uh, just uh, just let you know, though, however, so people who, who don't know, um, don't donations through, through Super Chat are great. But I think we lose a certain percentage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what it is. I'll have to check. Yeah. Well, and, and and it's like when you're when you're donating for the the, the charity that uh, YouTube takes a chunk of that. So, uh, thank you. We yes. absolutely do love it and appreciate it. But if you want the money to go directly to the charity, just send it to the email address you see on the screen, and Mr. Beaver will make sure that it goes directly to the charity. Yeah, on that one. Uh, but any way you give, that's fine. It's, yeah. Just like this. Thank you. It's more more for your choice, you your choice for you. Yeah, right. it, it, yeah. Uh, you're giving you the option if you want more of your money to go directly to the charity versus uh, a, a multi billion platform. dollar corporation taking a chunk of it. Yeah, because we're not That's taking it. any cash ourselves uh, no. for, for this event. Uh, we've actually invested money in this event, and yeah, it's it's not it's not supposed to be profit driven on a, like. Some charities, you know, generate profit for people in the company that work within the charitable organization. And yes, if you have people working there, absolutely, they have to get paid, If it's, especially if it's a full-time gig. In our case, because we both have full-time employment, we're just giving our time and, you know, a few bucks as well, <laughs> but we're, we're not taking anything from it. This is, this is done uh, out of love and concern and care. Yeah, indeed, indeed. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's everything for the mental health walk. Of course, if you're in Ottawa, June 15th, tomorrow, join us at noon live podcast at three with our guests, uh, uh, Senator Patrick Brazo and, uh, Dr. Marie Claire Sancho. That's her mm -hmm. name. Uh, and, uh, she's a, by the way, PhD in education. Um, you know, uh, looking at uh why am again, i going to be in the same boys, room with that person young boys and whatnot so i mean the, we have two exceptional guests uh yes. with us that in their own right who happen to be husband and wife <laughs> so uh but both of them equally accomplished and can speak to the issues um all right uh democracy is something that you do you know all of that but this weekend particularly Hey, support the mental health walk if you can. Get people talking, get people walking. Mr. Grizzly's given his words of wisdom. So, kids and cubs, it could be a tough world out there. Please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, cue the cock. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, 
and the Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. <laughs> All right. Since. Oh, uh, yeah, everybody told me. There we go. Because last year it didn't appear because the, the the green screen. That's mm -hmm. what I got for my birthday. So that makes me very, very, very happy. Mr. Grizzly, did you read the, re the review of the new restaurant on the moon? No, I did not. Great food. No atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I love dad jokes. <laughs> All righty. I'll see you. Take care. Hopefully you can join us tomorrow. Weekend.